Howdy friends, welcome to Hawkeye Speaks, walk and talk on the Mesa. So I just want to talk a little bit about the climate here and kind of come up with this idea I was talking to my partner about the last couple days about proposing a question for normies about the climate, which is, if you were experiencing warmer temperatures, global warming, climate change, if you're experiencing climate instability in your area, would you think it more plausible that temperature regulation is caused by local conditions such as forests, grasslands, wetlands, or their counterpart, parking lots, pavement. You know, what would you think that the temperature regulation is a factor of local conditions such as that, or do you understand it to be a factor of atmospheric carbon, atmospheric greenhouse gases? So it's kind of a funny thing. I mean, a lot of people today would be you know, just rubbed the wrong way by even trying to ask the question. And it would be, I think, hard to get anyone to even engage in a, in that kind of just rational debate about what's going on around us. But if you could get someone to, uh, my, my impression is that most people don't have a real coherent explanation for how carbon in the atmosphere would cause local warming, well, probably because it's a rather fraudulent narrative, but also because really, uh, you know, what, what is the explanation? You could recycle the greenhouse gas theory that these, these elements in the atmosphere trap heat from escaping back out, but if questioned on the science of how that actually works, I doubt that anyone could, could really hold on. I'm sure that people could regurgitate, some people could regurgitate um, facts and figures to no end. But, you know, the essential just basic idea is asking this question, would you think that temperature is regulated by local conditions or atmospheric conditions, local environmental conditions. And, you know, I think it would be relatively obvious, just asking the question, that it is local environmental conditions regulating temperature. You know, it's, uh, if you're going to use temperature as a metric of climate stability, you kind of have to just be honest about this factor that it's always 10, 20 degrees cooler underneath the tree in the shade. You know, and if you cut down all the trees and uh, yeah, you don't have any grasses growing because you have bare ground and desertification taking hold of all the arid lands of the world, well, the temperature might increase a bit, don't you think? But another thing about <laughs> climate change, Oh my goodness, we just had the coldest winter on record out here. I'll tell you, I've been out here for 25 years. Coldest winter on record. And of course, not a word about it. And now this summer, there's all this propaganda about record high temperatures, 30,000 record high temperatures all over the world, blah, blah, blah. Well, if it gets record cold and record hot, Obviously, that's not global warming, that's climate instability. And what is stability regulated? Well, friends, this is why I'm talking about the Gaia theory. Gaia theory is, uh, you know, paid a bit of lip service these days, but it certainly is not given the scientific validation that it deserves, which is exactly what, what James Lovelock and Lynn Margulis, well, particularly Lovelock, was rather concerned when they used the name Gaia for the hypothesis. But here we are. So I propose this question 
that you, you know you ask people do you think it's that the climate stability is regulated by atmospheric carbon or local conditions and I would actually like to see if anyone could even get anyone to engage in a simple debate like this you're far more likely to have a conversation with children right this is something that children could easily discuss and that's just I mean I'm not I'm not gonna go on too too long right now just kind of wanted to share this little thought and that's kind of a good place to leave it that we had to kind of consider the state of humanity right now that essentially all the things I'm trying to share and teach about they're just kindergarten level elementary school level and it offends people but the thing is we weren't taught this stuff in kindergarten in elementary school in our family settings in most cases you know we can all just admit that the soil health understanding the microbiome knowledge it wasn't there when we were kids we were living in a world of reductionist materialist kill and control mentality nature's dead man dominates you know <laughs> and now kind of the repercussions of moving away from that unfortunately is centered more around man hating than hating the reductionist toxic masculine thinking which is employed by women just as much as men so yeah again i just kind of want to make that point that i think children could easily have these conversations that we could should probably be having you know, when I took the time to really dig into soil health and land management and just to ask what are the problems going on, I came up with a whole set of solutions. This is, this is five, six years ago, and I wrote a few papers, and I really I didn't get any attention from anyone with the papers. I put them out as much as I could, and, and the thing is, these, these papers that I wrote, they're just about simple grassroots, bottom-up ideas. Most of them are all centered around groups, forming groups that meet and organize for the purpose of, again, grassroots, bottom-up, um, land regeneration, soil regeneration activities, even uh, other human health community regeneration activities. So sometimes these the simplest solutions get ignored the most when probably what we should be focusing on. So thanks for listening. I guess this is a good time to say if you're new to my channel thanks for joining me. Glad to have you. This is a personal channel. Hawkeye Speaks, Joseph Gilby, Jojo me and the cats, me and the pup, the woodworking, the music, whatever. It's just random stuff. I would like to create another channel that is focused exclusively on healing the earth and reconnecting with nature. And this is kind of a trial run for that. But, um, yeah, if you're new, newly following, thanks for joining me. You can expect to see a variety of stuff going on here. But, uh... Whatever I talk about, it's coming from the heart. I am not trying to sow any seeds of division, but rather just trying to talk about wholesome solutions. Thanks. Like and subscribe and all that really would help me out. Thanks everybody.